Hey guys, this is Vadim with MaxTech, and in this, oh sorry guys, our new premium Apple product mask is so comfy I almost forgot I still had it on. You should definitely go check it out in our merch shelf right below this video, because if we're in this thing for the long haul, then we may as well do it in style. Thanks to recent rumors and leaks, it's becoming more and more likely that the very first Apple Silicon Mac is gonna be a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now you probably have a ton of questions, like what about the 14 inch display size? Or what about the MacBook Air or the iMac? Or maybe there will be a revival of the 12 inch MacBook. Is the Apple Silicon 16 inch MacBook Pro coming this year? Should I wait for the new ARM Max or just buy an Intel Mac right now? Is Apple Silicon actually going to be as fast as current Intel Macs? What about that Intel iMac that I mentioned was going to be released very soon? Should we expect touchscreen displays to finally come to the Mac? The answer to that last question is actually no, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But first, I want to go through those other questions. Let's start with the reason why I think the 13-inch MacBook Pro is going to be the first Apple Silicon Mac and why it totally makes sense. On June 22nd, the same day as WWDC, the reliable analyst ming Shikuo Kuo announced that he expects Apple to release a 13-inch MacBook Pro and a new 24-inch iMac both packing Apple Silicon later this year. And he also said that we should expect one more Intel iMac to be launched in Q3 of 2020 before the launch of Apple Silicon. Now, as far as that Intel iMac, we've already seen leaked benchmarks with brand new 10th gen Intel chips, but we're still waiting on the launch. And very recently, John Prosser is saying that we should expect it to launch next month in August. So we'll just have to see. Back to the Apple Silicon Macs, Ming Shikuo mentioned that the MacBook Pro will not be redesigned this year, but will most likely just have the new ARM chip. And that totally makes sense, since the display size is going unchanged. Many other leakers have also confirmed that the 13.3 inch MacBook Pro is most likely to get Apple Silicon first, like John Prosser and Digitimes, which also think the MacBook Air is coming this year as well, so I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now I'm not totally certain about this, but I expect that only the base model MacBook Pro will be replaced with Apple Silicon at first, leaving the $1800 MacBook Pro with with the 10 gen Intel chip, which was recently updated. This way, consumers will have a choice between Intel or Apple Silicon during this short transition period. And as far as the 14 inch MacBook Pro, I personally expect that to come sometime next year with a brand new mini LED display and an Apple Silicon chip, which will replace the current $1800 Intel model. So by that time next year, users will either have the choice between the 13.3 inch ARM MacBook Pro without a redesign or the more expensive $1800 14-inch MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon and the new display. And as far as the 16-inch MacBook Pro, absolutely do not expect an Apple Silicon model to be released until the 14-inch MacBook Pro is released next year. And rumors are pointing to a launch date between June and August for both of those models. Now let's talk about the MacBook Air and recent rumors are pointing to that model being updated with Apple Silicon at the same time as the MacBook Pro. Now some people are expecting it to actually be a revival of the 12 inch MacBook instead of the MacBook Air, but let me explain why I don't think that's the case. First off, we haven't seen any rumors pointing to it being a 12 inch MacBook. And second, the original 12 inch MacBook required the brand new, incredibly thin butterfly keyboard, which Apple has since completely ditched for the Magic Keyboard, which is now quite a bit more thick. And personally, I can't stand the 12 inch MacBook because it feels like a toy to me. So based on all of that, don't expect the 12 inch MacBook to come back at least not this year. Now there are still people commenting on our videos thinking that these new Apple Silicon Macs will have touchscreen displays, but I seriously doubt that. Check out this clip. And yet, with all the new capabilities and advantages that Apple Silicon offers, there's one thing that certainly stays the same. Macs will stay Macs the way you know and love them. So that shows that Apple wants to keep Macs the same. 
And if you watched my last video, you'll know that Apple Silicon Macs are gonna run completely unmodified iPhone and iPad apps right out of the box on day one. And that's probably the reason why people are expecting touchscreen displays to come to the Mac. But if Apple was actually planning that, then they wouldn't go through all of the trouble to make this work. Now, let's look at an iPad game, Monument Valley. This app is the exact same one available in the iOS App Store. Mouse clicks are mapped to tabs. I can zoom in as expected on the trackpad. I can click and drag to rotate and create a path for our character. The game is fully playable. That was a completely unmodified game running on an Apple Silicon Mac. So Apple is automatically remapping touch input and converting it into mouse pointer input on the Mac. Check out this next clip. We'll be able to run a higher quality hardware supported 444 encoder for even better image quality when connecting your Mac to an iPad with Sidecar. Apple is improving the quality of Sidecar, which is when you connect your iPad to your Mac so you can have touchscreen support. Apple wouldn't be doing any of this if they were planning on bringing touchscreen displays to their Macs. And now let's just use simple common sense. If the new Apple Silicon Macs can run iPhone and iPad apps unmodified, and Apple added touchscreen displays to those Macs, there would literally be no point to keep the iPad Pro around. And Apple is definitely keeping it around. So no, Macs are not getting touchscreen displays. And as far as the release date of these new Apple Silicon Macs, some leakers have pointed to an Apple event happening on October 27th which lines up with the dates of previous Apple October events. And as for that new Apple Silicon 24-inch iMac that we originally thought was coming this year, we've recently stopped seeing any mentions of that model, so there's a chance that we won't see it until next year. Now let's move on to the big question that's on everyone's mind. Should I wait for Apple Silicon or just buy an Intel-based Mac right now? Well, if you're a student and you absolutely need a Mac before school starts, then you obviously have no choice since we're not expecting Apple Silicon Macs to ship until November. Now, if you're in the market for a 13-inch MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, then you need to ask yourself what you're trying to achieve with it. If you wanna do some web browsing, Netflix watching, or using common apps, then you should definitely wait since Apple Silicon will give you much better battery life and the ability to run iPhone and iPad apps natively. Now, as far as professional work goes, if you mainly use apps from either Apple, Microsoft, or Adobe, then you should definitely wait because of this. Pages, numbers, and Keynote run great. And this is one of the most demanding Pro apps, Final Cut Pro, with real-time rendering of several movie streams. And Logic, our music creation powerhouse, easily keeping up with large projects. We already worked with a number of our partners to bring the apps to Apple Silicon as well. Here's Adobe Photoshop, already taking advantage of the new architecture and running fast on this new Mac. And Microsoft has brought up their Office apps, such as Word and Excel. Of course, our developer tools also work great on Apple Silicon and can be used to create native apps. So all of those apps are already running very well on Apple Silicon. Now, if you're a high-end user, let me remind you that Apple most likely won't release high-end Macs like the 16-inch MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon until around the summer of 2021. So you have to decide if you want to wait that long. But if you use very specific editing apps like Resolve 16 Studio for your professional work that makes you money, it may be a good idea to buy an Intel-based Mac right now, since there's no knowing how long it'll take to optimize those apps for Apple Silicon. And the very last point is gaming. If your idea of gaming is playing mobile games like Clash of Clans, Call of Duty Mobile, or Fortnite, then you should definitely wait for Apple Silicon. But if you enjoy AAA titles like Battlefield 5 and Call of Duty Warzone, then I would just buy an Intel-based Mac right now because it still supports Windows 10 using Boot Camp. And if you're stuck somewhere in the middle of all of those scenarios and your choice depends on how powerful these Apple Silicon Macs will be, then I would definitely subscribe right now because in my next video, 
I'm gonna go through a very specific Apple developer video that actually shows you the performance of Apple Silicon. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and if you learned something new, go ahead and tap the like button below, and be sure to check out our premium Apple product mask down below in our merch shelf, which we also have a white version. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.